Hey, welcome. This is Helldiver450, and I'm here to give you a little tutorial on how to make cutting objects on Deep Exploration 5, CAD Edition. Um, unfortunately, I have this off screen because I'm trying to focus on one zone. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and give you this tutorial. First, you always got to go to your Create Primitives. That's something you already probably already know. And when you're trying to cut over here, always try to select this little uh, semi bluish, semi orangish box. This is what lets you cut around with the objects. You already know this so far. And let me see, I have to select it on the left half. Alright, gotta have this on. Always gotta choose the half you wanna stick with first, because once you have that ready, you gotta stick with it to the very end. Because if you try using the other half, while you're working on it, you know, it's not gonna look symmetrical as you would like. Alright, so here you have your little red box, and if you select it, you can rotate it, obviously. You can move it around. Well, not always. You can move it in whichever way you want to cut it, or the depth of how much you want to cut. But you can't cut small, precise objects. Although, although it's a box, don't let it fool you. It's actually a plane that you see. Only the red part of it cuts. And it does not chip away little bits of it. It's just one broad slash. See, as you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and make one broad slash right here. So, every time you cut, always make sure that you collapse the hierarchy, otherwise you're going to have floating objects flying around. You don't want that. So, let's go ahead and uh, set the hierarchy here. Always got to make sure to collapse, otherwise you're going to get lost, parts are going to be missing, and uh, you're going to be a very, very angry child. Alright, so always make sure that you avoid using the first quarter because it doesn't really do much unless you're using an object on the very top. So let's say you want to cut a different angle here. This also allows you to get from a different side. And once you got a decent looking object going, let's say you know you already carved enough stuff from your cube at the very end. Not great. Why do I keep selecting this? Alright, so let's say you want to go ahead and keep cutting shapes around here. Stick to your half like I was saying, and you'll be getting a lot of progress done, you know? Okay, so for example, let's say I'm going to cut this little corner off. Remember, this is what happens when you don't pay attention to the collapsed hierarchy part. So always remember that. See, I just made that mistake. And yes, I admit to it. I made a mistake. And always make sure you gotta color it to the main body so that way it'll look a little closer to normal. It's never noticeable when you have the full model up. It's only noticeable unless you have it on cell shade mode. But then again, if you reduce it, some of those lines will go away. For example, if I hit this, reduce, keep 51%, some of those lines begin to go away. But yeah, let's just go ahead and undo that real quick. So, here we have the other half of the cube, just simply select the, whoops, wrong side. And if you cut that, you have something that looks um, pretty neat, I don't know how, I don't know why, but looks neat in a way. Always make sure to collapse your hierarchy, and color it whatever choice of the body that you wanted to color in the first place. Always take advantage of your distortion tools. This is what lets you deform it in different ways depending on the angle. I love using the when it's set to world because you can take advantage of it to store it in different ways. The different angles that you distort it in change what way it's going to be moving or shaped and it gives you the advantage to make it into different shapes. So let's say, for example, I want to clip this part on the bottom. Select that. Actually, let's go ahead and clip it to the corner. That looks alright-ish. Remember to always collapse the hierarchy. I still don't know if it's pronounced that way or not. Be sure to correct me if you want. Now 
number. Always increase your depth in order to change how far you want to cut into it. Alright, so let's say you got a decent shape going on, right? So now let's go ahead and uh Okay. So you just hit the mirror tool once you're done with all of that. Select X. This will allow it to spawn right next to you. Of course it doesn't always want to spawn directly next to you, but at least it stays on the same plane, which is decent to say the least. Of course you always end up with this stupid annoying mirror in the bottom. Always watch out for that. Nobody likes a stupid mirror. First, let me get rid of the stupid mirror again. There we go. Make sure you set the pivot point to center for both, just to make sure that they are perfectly aligned. Always watch out for those little cracks in the middle. They're really annoying and they definitely ruin the model in the future. Always take advantage of your symmetry tool here because it looks fantastic once you got something done. Even if it's crappy and badly made, I mean if you take advantage of the copy and paste you could probably make something neat. And let's say you can copy paste, resize over here like this. You got yourself something that looks like front mission or something, I don't know. They always made very basic and not very flashy mechs in their games and series. Just saying. Alright, so if you use the symmetry tool, symmetry tool again, center it off. And you got something that looks kind of decent. All you gotta do is just cut the sides to make the cut the sides to make uh, symmetrical arm holes or whatever you call the mounts for the arms. Like use cubes if you want, you know, it doesn't have to be anything specific. Of course the box never really wants to show up right away because it's a very rude biatch. Oh okay, sometimes it likes to hide in the body. And, uh, pretty much this is all you really need. I mean, I love boxes because they can be cut into any shape, unlike spheres, which always have some kind of round off that's very unnecessary. I like using the smaller square section here because it gives me some precise control, or rather imprecise control sometimes. Set the rotation. And you got yourself, uh, arm mount thing. Now of course you just gotta delete the other side. Ah crap, I forgot to set the hierarchy for that. Always remember to set the hierarchy. Don't make newbie mistakes like me, I'm still new to this. Goddamn mirror! And so yeah, you got something like this going on. Toss in a few colors, maybe some materials. Ooh, flashy. Ooh, shiny. Fantastic blue. And, uh, there you go, pretty much. Something flashy. Well, I guess this concludes this tutorial, and, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for checking it out, and I'll see you later. Bye.